Well, good afternoon, everyone. And, um, you know, I just wanted to thank you for being here this afternoon. I know on a Friday afternoon, sometimes it's difficult. We figure a lot of people are heading south to Eclipse. So, um, which I may be doing Sunday. Don't know if I'm going to regret that or not, but, you know, give it a go. So, anyway, we're really excited um, to share with you the first ever Kaizen that we have done in the recording department. Um, in the past 25 years, the recording division has seen huge amounts of change. Everything from, I think the first huge change was in, I think, 2005, when the cover sheet, the additional requirements for indexing, um, the legibility requirements all came into play. Then, as the years went by, um, we saw various changes to our software and our ability to image documents that made the electronic recording possible. So, I mean, huge changes. Right now in, in Kitsap County, we're up to 45% electronic recorded documents. So, all of these changes have had a, a big play in our processes. Um, so often when changes happen, new steps are added to the process. In recording, we're such of a, a production department. Um, we are, you know, required to record every document that's presented daily. And this can be a huge challenge to staff. Um, it could be, a, you know, in Kitsap County, between 150 or 400 or more documents a day. And we never know from day to day what that number is going to be. So as we go through and we, we look at that demand and the number of steps, this is just a perfect opportunity for us to step back, really take a look at the processes we do, because we really haven't had a lot of time to do that in the past years. And I know that there's never a real good time to do that. So I just wanted to say a special thanks to our staff who have actually made that time. They've supported this process, this way for us to really improve uh, the product that we provide to our customers and really meet the, the values of our mission and our commitment to public service in Kitsap County. So it, it's been a while getting here, but I'm just really excited to share that. Um, I'm going to let David Frisk, our administrative services manager, who uh, manages both the recording and the licensing department, he's also the project lead on this Kaizen event, and he is also a black belt in, in the process improvement. So we're very fortunate um, to have David here, and I'll just let him walk you through the, the report out. Thank you, Dolores. Thank you all for taking time out of your day to come, and uh, especially thank you to those that participated in this. We had a lot of participants. Um, I'm going to go through, if you don't mind, go through the whole presentation, and we will have time for questions and answers at the end. So um, we'll get started. This was a long time coming, but it was an effort that it, it took a lot of people to get it going. It's, whenever you take people out of a production department, um, it, it's, it's a challenge. Um, so we have a lot of folks that helped. Um, our champion, of course, Dolores, who we couldn't do without her. Um, the Peak team, Andy and Peter um, and Roy, who were there with us and basically making sure we were heading in the right direction. And then our two facilitators, Caitlin and Kyle, um, who were our fearless leaders throughout the whole process. And it was just, it's so great to have facilitators come in that aren't working the process every day because they have that great perspective of learning the process along the way and asking really terrific questions. Um, and then um, Kimberly, uh, my supervisor, who ma supervises both the licensing and recording departments, and myself, but uh, all of our team members, Mich uh, uh, Michelle and Jennifer and Mary Duvall and Amy and Nancy, 
they couldn't participate in the Kaizen because they were holding down the fort. So they were key members of the team that we couldn't have done this without them. Um, and Mary and uh, Erica were there as well. They're really familiar with the process and it, it was just, overall, it was just a terrific experience. And yep, there you go. So I'm gonna have to manage this microphone and this, this thing here too, okay. So, we did this other thing which I thought was really cool and we invited some key stakeholders to the Kaizen, which was a, it was for like a two hour period in the middle of a five day week, but it could not have been more impactful. These folks made such a difference on the final um, outcome. Title companies who we work with every day, they, they present to us more than half of the documents that we record on a daily basis. Um, so we had a representative from them from Pacific Northwest Title, Lori and Carrie. Um, uh, lawyers do a lot of recording too with us as well. They're our regular customers. And so we brought in uh, Shane Seaman from she Seaman Law Firm. And he, he offered us a really good perspective from you know, a, s a smaller customer that doesn't have the, the volume of a, po a title company, but they still have needs and um, they, they have desires, and um, we don't always know what that is. We, we assume we know, but having him there to provide feedback was really good. And then we were lucky enough that um, one of our peers, Pierce County, um, Casey and Jill came um, also to uh, provide their point of view, and um, I think it was Casey who at one point said something that flipped our thinking and our process around, and we'll get to that in a little bit later. But another cool thing, which I can't, um, I can't, I have to say, uh, we invited the uh, treasurer and they had a representative there, we deal with them, and Schwartz, Kristen, um, who is like a, our partner as well, was there to offer feedback. This was a day when there was an accident on the highway, and these folks um, took them almost two hours to get here, if not more, for some of them, just to be there for two hours. And so that showed me that this is important to them. What we do has a big impact on them, and they cared enough to come and take all that time. I, it, was really, it was really cool, and I, I love the things that they were able to add. So the reason we did this is because we know that there's some things that we could do better. So we have we started with our project charter and we have a problem statement and there's a couple of areas that we wanted to focus on. One of them was that um, when we record a document, uh, it will sometimes sit in the indexing queue upwards of 20 days before it's been indexed and available for someone to search online. Sometimes it's sooner than that, but and on average it's about 10 business days, but that's still a long time, especially when people really, that's a the need for the customer, they want to see that document. Um, we get calls every day for people asking us, I recorded my document, why can't I see it? Our most frequent call probably is, um, what day are you indexed till? Which is a simple, nice, friendly call, but basically it tells us um, that they know that we're behind. They just want to know how far back behind we are, which is something that we really needed to address. Um, another problem, we, like Dolores was saying, over the years, uh, we've added more steps and more steps and more processes um, and not really trimming off along the way. So I think we added a whole bunch of, of stuff and we created a bunch of silos, a bunch of areas where a document will go and wait, um, which created a lot of waiting time, such as the indexing queue. Um, because of this, we're often playing catch up. We're trying, we're falling behind in indexing, so we're playing catch up, catch up, catch up, um, to the point where we're having to pull staff off of the line for six and a half hours a day to do nothing but index to help us catch up. So that, that person's not there to help record, to help service the customer, because they're just pulled away to do indexing. And so we're not able to 
so you offer the service that we, and that puts stress on everyone too. It's stress for people, physically it's stressful to sit there and stare at a screen for hours and hours on time just doing indexing. Um, I don't think there's anyone that likes it. And it's stressful for the folks that have to deal with everything else while they're short because somebody's in the back indexing. So those are the things that we wanted to focus on going in and we tried to keep our, um, our goals very simple. So we had simple um, project aim. We wanted to reduce the time from the time the document comes in until the time it's indexed and ready to be searched online. We wanted to try to eliminate any unnecessary steps along the way, any um, loops where things have to fall out of the uh, process and then get fixed and go back in again. Um, and we wanted to improve accuracy. Um, accuracy is important. We've really worked a lot on that um, over the last few years. We're, we record you know, over 99% accuracy and our indexing is over 95% accuracy. But that's still, when you're recording 60,000 documents, it still amounts to a lot of errors. And a lot of our errors that you know, maybe we could do something about. So we wanted to really look closely at that. So what we also realized was that we had silos of responsibility. So we have the counter staff, which would do the work that comes up to the counter. And then we had the title desk, which would do title work mostly. But we also had the title desk would also handle the mail as it comes in. And um, also, if there's a mail back, if we, to mail back the process, we created a new process where the title desk would then uh, pile up work for the mail back, and then that would go and sit in the mail back queue, and then somebody later on would take that mail and mail it out. Um, there was also a reject queue uh, where things that were going to be rejected would be then held off and processed for reject later on. And unfortunately, it was a little bit of a complicated process, and not many of our staff knew how to do it. And so it would sit there until the one person who was comfortable with the process could do it. And so these are folks that mailed in their documents. They had to wait for us to do them. And then we rejected it. And then they're going to have to wait to receive that. So they're waiting. And then finally, we finally record it. And then they got to wait another 20 days. I mean, it's just a, I think that over time, they came to expect what we were giving them. And, but we, we could deliver better. Um, and then there's the e-recordings. Um, that was a new thing for us a few years ago. We've worked really hard on that to, um, to provide better service on that. There were times in the past when documents would sit far too long in the um, e-recording queue. We've worked really hard to, um, to honor our commitment of getting those documents recorded within 30 minutes. Um, so one of the things we did was we created this e-recording champion, which that person was responsible for e-recordings. And if they had to leave, they would pass off the baton to someone else. And it did a pretty good job. Um, unfortunately, that responsibility often fell to the title desk as well. So as you can see, um, there's one area that's taking a lot of work. Uh, and that can create stress for folks as well. Some of the um, things that what we were able to do with this process was we were able to create a seamless process um, with what we call a one-piece flow, where things don't wait in silos anymore. And everyone can do all the work, and they share. It's a shared responsibility. Um, but we'll take a look at a couple of other things that, that happened. Here's our old process. These are some of the things that needed to change we had four uh, different processes. Whenever a document came to us, depending on where it came from, we would have a different process for completing that. We had, um, like I said, over 20 days, sometimes a document waiting to be um, indexed. And 100 different steps to record a document, many of those redundant steps. Uh, but still, separate processes create separate steps, a lot of redundancy. With this new process, with the Kaizen and all the work that we did, we were able to radically reform that and simplify it 
to one process for everything that comes through, zero waiting time. There is no waiting in the indexing queue. And we went from 100 steps to 41 steps. Um, not that we changed a lot from the main line of process, but we eliminated a lot of duplicate steps on duplicate processes, which was really good. And what I want to show you now is um, something that I didn't believe when I first saw it, and I kept having to go back and do the math on it, but this is a true statistic that came out of this um, Kaizen, and it's pretty shocking. Um, with our new process, we will save over 4.8 million customer hours per year. It's, I mean, it sounds ridiculous, but it's true. Um, on average, not the, the worst case scenario, on average, a document would sit for 10 days in the indexing queue. A conservative work day would be eight hours. So that's 80 hours for a document. We don't have the most documents in a county. We're like medium, but we still record 60,000 documents a year. That's 60,000 different documents waiting for an average of 80 hours each. It's a simple math, and it comes to 4.8 million customer hours. This is not to include the time that will be saved for us having to answer those questions on the phone all the time, because the, the answer will be the same for everybody, and eventually that, that will, they'll learn that they don't even have to call anymore because they already have the answer. But there's more. We also did a lot of um, uh, error proofing along the way to, to work on our accuracy, which is really cool. We, we couldn't do this all without the, the Kaizen process, which was five long days of really hard work, but it was well worth it. Um, and what we were able to do in working with our partners and working together, we were able to um, map out our old process, identify pain points, and come up with ideas, and map out a new process, you know, throw out some, boy, I wish we could do this ideas that, you know, some, sometimes we can do it. And so we were able to incorporate. We had a, a ton of great ideas. Um, and it was a lot of fun as well. And tiring, too. And poor Mary, she, she was having nightmares. Or was it just you were staying up all night? She couldn't sleep because she couldn't get her mind to stop working, which was really cool. <laughs> so, but in the end, you're going to save sleep. So uh, one of the... Uh, the first thing we, we did in the Kaizen process was we take our old process and we just map it out from start to finish, all the um, steps, uh, decision points. So if a document comes here, well, uh, can we record that document, yes or no? If we can, we go forward down the line. If we can't, well, that drops out of the line and we figure out why. Well, is it something that can be fixed or not? And if it has to go back to the customer or can we fix it right there? So we're, we did a lot of that. Um, we also identified rework loops, where things drop out, and some of those loops we realized after going through this were unnecessary. We could get rid of them. Uh, one of them was uh, um, we have an outside credit card company that doesn't um, talk to our recording system. And so whenever someone gives us a credit card, it drops out of the line. We have to process it over here and then come back in, enter the information into our recording system. Well, our vendor says, we can do that with our own integrated credit card system. So we can drop that whole loop and just keep everything smooth. So that's good. that was one of the cool things we identified. We also tagged every step with a data tag um, that said, how long does it take to complete this step? How many people does it take to complete this step? What's the percentages of time that we do this step right without error, without you know, rework or anything like that? And it really helped us, you know, kind of see, um, just kind of see where, where we have some, you know, pain points and things. And then we wrote all of our pain points on little pink sticky notes and all of our ideas and solutions we wrote on little blue sticky notes. And it, it's just a great way to do this process because 
We're documenting everything along the way. We're talking about everything. If somebody doesn't understand something, you know, we talk about it and we make sure that we have clarification and, um, and consensus, which is great. Um, <clears throat> so in looking at our old process, um, one of the things we also did was to take a close look at our inputs. What goes into the process um, and what, what comes out at the end. So um, our, our outputs really rely on our inputs. If, and our inputs are um, things like uh, our staff. Staff is an input. Uh, procedures, our customers, our hardware, our software, all these things go into the process. The documents themselves. What comes out is things that can be measured, things that you would call metrics. So um, those things would be like the time, time it takes to record something, time it takes to index something. Uh, the time something sits in an indexing queue or a waiting queue, any errors we might have, recording errors, indexing errors, um, the percentage of electronically recorded documents. It's something we measure. So those would be outputs. And what we did with those was, um, in order to you know, identify what inputs have the most impact on our outputs, we, we ranked them all in, as to like, w okay, the staff, um, has this much impact on errors or this much impact on um, the time it takes to record. And the software, well, the software has limitations, so it has this much impact. We rank them all, and then what we come up with was um, this chart, which shows in the blue, um, those blue ones are all contributing to about 80% of our, uh, what you would call defects. Um, it, what it gives us is it tells us where we need to focus our improvements on. We don't need to focus our improvements on hardware because we don't have issues with the hardware. The hardware, if we change out our scanners, it's really not going to change us much. It's not going to solve our problems much. We need to focus our solutions on those that have the most impact on the output. Staff. Now, when we talk about input or, or impact that these things have, this is, it's not a negative thing. It's all the good and all the bad mixed together. We can't do the job without our staff. The staff, their knowledge has an impact on what we do. If, if we have someone that's out on leave, that has an impact on what we do. Um, um, training, our procedures. If we don't have good procedures, then you know, we're gonna, that's, that's going to have an impact on what we produce. And it's going to possibly contribute to more errors and so on. We're ha we have a new process that we're doing now. If we don't have new good procedures, if we don't train our staff on the new process, it's not going to work. We're just going to create more problems for ourselves. Um, our customers, so glad that we were able to have them there, to listen to them because we learned um, a lot, that they, they do have an impact. They bring us everything. Without them, we have no job. Um, they bring us the documents to record. And of course, our software, this is our recording software. We could have another software, but what we have now um, is good, and we do rely on it. We could possibly, if it go, the computers go down, we have a manual process, but the software is very important to us. And there is a lot it can do that we didn't know it could do. Um, there are limitations to it, and it's good to, that we know those limitations, but it can do more for us. So in looking at all these, we can, kinda, we can tell where we need to focus our, our, um, our changes on. So um, we, from that, we did a lot of brainstorming, talking to each other, brainstorming ideas, identifying solutions. Um, this, at this point in the week, this is where we actually brought our partners in. So we basically, at this point, we know what all our pain points are, and we have a good idea of we, where we think we're going to go with this. But bringing our partners in opened our eyes a little bit more, and we identified some more things that really needed to change. I think one of the most impactful things that said was what one thing that Casey said, because when we're talking about 
what's important? And she said, um, well, scanning the document is so important, why are we doing it at the end? And it, we weren't even thinking about that, but it really made sense to us, and we started going over it and over it, and we said, well, yeah, why are we doing it at the end? And can we do anything about that? Can we talk to the vendor? Can we change that? Um, it's really important, and it was so great to have everyone there. Um, from this, we took all of our little solutions, all those blue sticky notes, and we basically voted on all of them. And we wanted to come to consensus. We weren't going to try to implement new ideas just because I think they're great ideas, although that would be good too, <laughs> but <laughs> maybe not as effective. So if we all have consensus, if we're all agreed that going into this, yep, yeah, this is a good change, it's going to be positive, we need to do this, then we're all going to support the change. It's going to be a lot easier to implement our changes when we have consensus. So that was a very effective thing. And there was a couple of times when we're doing this where um, maybe we had uh, an idea that five out of six people thought was great and one person didn't. And so we would ask the question, um, well, okay, one person didn't like this idea. Well, why? And in a couple of cases, it was more of, a, well, wasn't quite sure what the idea was. So we talked about it a little bit more, and then that person says, yeah, you know what, I really do understand that. Yeah, I'll vote for that. And so it kind of flipped it over, but that was the great thing about this. No, nothing was uh, just brushed by. Nothing was just like, we didn't try to speed through it. We took our time with it, and we made sure that what we were doing, um, that, that we put the care into it, and so that we could get something great out of it. So in the end, what we created was this, what we call single, single flow process. Um, so what we had before was one, oh, sorry. Oh, I just turned it off, sorry. There we go. We had basically four of these. And we just cut out three of them, or two of them, and we just left with one. So we have one document that goes from here all the way through before we start the next one. So instead of coming here and then waiting over here and then waiting over here again, we, we take it and take it all the way through. Um, we didn't think that we could do that with everything, and, and, and some of it was misunderstanding. We talked to Kristen, who works with the title companies every day, and there were some ideas that we were under the misconception that we had to do things a certain way and we didn't. The Heidel companies didn't need that. Kristen said, no, we don't really need to do that. And so here we were doing things one way, and we didn't have to do them. So it was really cool, and um, it looks pretty too, doesn't it? <laughs> so um, I wanted to just take a couple of close looks at some of our major uh, changes too. This is the old process, the way we did things before. We would take a document over the counter or through title work. We would review it, make sure that it meets the standards. Then we would go into the system, enter some data, and then we would accept payment for that document and give the customer a receipt. And then we would scan the document. Then it would sit in an indexing queue and wait for who knows how long. And then finally we'd get to it and we'd index it, and then it would be available to search online. So this was our old process. There's a couple of points in here that really opened us up for some uh, defect. Um, scanning the document after we accept payment, it left us open for what was probably the most unacceptable error in recording, and that is recording a document and not capturing an image. Um, so it happened a couple of times, and, and we were very lucky to be able to contact a customer for them to bring it back. It's not something that we ever want to happen, but if we're giving a receipt to someone, and of course, we're human beings, we're talking to that person, and unfortunately, the receipt and the originals walk right out the door. And then later on, we get busy, answer the phone, whatever, 
and we realized we didn't scan that document. It's happened a couple of times, like I said, thankfully we were able to, to resolve it, but it should not happen. The indexing queue, of course, no customer should be made to wait and wait and wait for something that it takes us a minute to do. So that was another real pain point, and nobody's happy when, when that happens. So what we did was we had to flip this process. Um, and so that's exactly what we did. We dropped the indexing queue out, and we flipped it around. We just moved the indexing ahead of the receding, and we moved the scanning to the very beginning. So we can't record a document without first scanning it, capturing the image, and indexing it. That way, when we give the receipt out to someone, as Kyle was saying, we can tell them, here you're recorded and you're indexed and searchable online. Of course, they're, they're going to be going, what? Can you say that again? So eventually, they'll get used to it. But that is, that is like the coolest thing. Um, it, I'm excited. I get excited about it every time I talk about it because I just think it's so cool. Um, on top of that, we added some um, additional error proofing because we want to make sure that what we're doing is accurate as well. Um, of course, scanning first is a huge error proofing. Eliminates the possibility of that one horrible, terrible error. Um, we also um, are going to be adding some recording and indexing character limitations so that when someone's entering a tax parcel number, they can't enter it a uh, number short or a number over. In Kitsap County, the tax parcel numbers always have to be 14 digits. You can't have one, more or less. But and still, we, we record something or we index it and we find out that there's not enough numbers in the tax parcel. But now, since it's going to be limited and we're going to be indexing it as we record it, then we're going to catch it right there on site. So uh, in addition to eliminating the fact that we made an error, that customer may not have to re-record that document because we can fix it right there. So they, we just saved them you know, however much money they would have to pay again. Another thing that we can do is we can put document-specific limitations. Right now we have uh, documents that require um, excise, and so they all have it. You can't record it without entering the excise number. Well, we can, redo that. We can do that with other things. For example, um, substitutions or reconveyance or a assignment of deed of trust always has to refer to a previously recorded document. So we just make it mandatory. You can't record it without entering that, that number in there. Unfortunately, throughout the years, there's different sizes of that number. Right now, it's currently it's 12, and I think it was as small as 6 at one point. So we, but we can still limit it. We can make it mandatory, and then we can make it limited, which is great. And that's going to save us. That alone would save us 200 errors a year just by making the, it, um, just by making it um, mandatory to type in a reference number when you record one of these documents. Um, the one-piece flow system, or we also call it a pull system. And this is when um, you, you're not pushing items through, you're, only, you're pulling them in. And you, you don't pull an I another item in until the, the first one has gone through. So it's, it's really simple, but it's really the best. Nothing waits for something else. It's, it's really a terrific idea. And um, on top of that, because we're doing it that way and we're not creating a, uh, waiting queues, Everybody can work on everything, and all, st all staff members can help all customers. But in, we still have priority of things. So when someone brings us a document over the counter, we have to record that document. If an e-recording comes in, we have to record that document. Um, if title work comes in, we have to record that document by the end of the day, right? So we need to prioritize this so that since we're all helping and all pulling from all these different um, areas, we make sure that we're still keeping in the priority that it needs. So if you're helping a customer at the line and an e-recording comes in, you don't stop helping that person. You finish helping that person. Then you check the e-recording queue. If there's an e-recording in there, you process it. If not, 
You go to the title bin. Is there a title work that needs to be processed? No, we're all done with that. Okay, well then you pull something from the mail bin and we just keep doing it that way and everyone's pulling and sharing the work and we don't have it all falling onto you know, the title desk. Implementation. That's where we're at now in the process. Um, we've implemented just a couple of uh, small changes, but we're hopefully by the end, by September 30th, our goal is to have the plan implemented. Um, communication is key during this implementation, and one of the things that we're going to do is um, part of our plan is to educate our customers about e-recording because it's easier for them, it's easier for us because we don't even have to scan the document. All we have to do is look at it, make sure it's okay, and index it, which is great. And that's what, um, that's like this small bit of that whole big long line of process. So if we can get more people to e-record it, it, it allows us to do other things. And it's better for them. We're going to um, work on our website so that it's easier for people to use. So that, um, and we're going to measure. We have analytics now that we can measure how people are using our website. What, what are they looking at? And we're going to gather feedback from them to see what is it you need. Um, we're going to keep trying to get better. Um, communication with the staff, I think, is probably the most important thing that we need to do. Um, we have to write new procedures. We have to, we're going to be having regular team meetings as we implement to talk about, you know, how's this going? Are you guys finding any hiccups? We're going to be, we have to continue to, um, to talk, share feedback. People have to be... Um, they have to feel that they can give their feedback. Um, otherwise, we're not going to we're not going to get better. Okay. Um, okay, and so we're getting ready right now. We're going to test what we can. Um, we can't test everything. Um, unfortunately, our our vendor doesn't have like a test uh, sandbox or anything like that. So when we do go into the um, uh, new process where we flip it around, we can look at a sample test, but we're going to have to be ready ahead of time. Um, there are some things we can test. Um, right now, we can index an e-recording when it comes in. So we can test that and see how it goes. And we've done some of that testing. And um, I know that um, Erica um, in the back has done some of that testing. and. It worked great, and I've done some as well. It, it, it actually, it, it, it minimizes the amount of errors that we have because when you're indexing, say, a tax parcel, at the same time as you're recording it, you're counting those numbers when you're indexing it. You're making sure, you're not just glancing at the document to see, oh yeah, I've got this, this, and this, margins are good, okay, let's record it. You're actually entering the data that you need, and you're determining, is this data right or not, and then you can communicate with that customer at that time, you know, this is, um, you know, we need to change this, fix it. We have to work out the kinks. There's going to be kinks. Um, any new process, hiccups, roadblocks, we're going to have to work together to get those out. And then we're going to continue to analyze our metrics because th we can't stop. You know, we can't just accept our process and say, we're not going to get any better. We have to continue to look at it, continue to see, OK, this is good. We've done better, but where can we get better? And I think that we're committed to that. Just in the summary, um, we have really, really high expectations for this. Um, but this is some of the things that we've really done. That's, that's a bug spray thing there, because we're eliminating unwanted things. It took me a minute to get that, so I thought I would uh, explain that. Um, we're eliminating three waiting queues. We're eliminating the indexing queue, where documents would wait. We're el eliminating the mail-out queue, so when a document gets mailed in and we process it, it doesn't then just go and wait for someone else to mail it out. And we're, gonna el we're eliminating the rejects queue, too. Um, if, you're, if we're rejecting your document, we need to let you know as soon as possible. It shouldn't be waiting. And we're saving millions of customer hours and staff hours. That, I just like to say that word again. Millions. It's amazing. Um, we flipped our process uh, to perform the most value-added steps at the beginning. 
and we automated error proofing to increase our accuracy. It's, it's exciting to be a part of this process now and excited, I'm excited for implementation because I think that we're going to identify, because now that we're thinking this way, I think we're just going to be, we're just going to keep identifying more and more ways to improve. So I thank you all very much for coming and um, if you have any questions, we're, we'd like to help. Yes. Okay. Would indexing be one of your bottlenecks? Was auto indexing ever considered as a solution? We do have some auto indexing. Um, it is, it's not um, utilized as best as it could, and that's another thing we're going to be working with the vendor on, trying to, um, to make that work for us better. Um, I did talk to our vendors um, specifically about that, and what they said was that like the best auto indexing performance that they've seen anywhere is about 80%, which is great. And I think that's going to help us. Right. So that's something that we're also going to be working on as well. Well, because um, the auto indexing, it's um, it's in the workflow at the scan step. So as soon as that document goes through the scan, the the auto index works at that point. Whether wherever, wherever we move the scan. So then, when you're indexing the document, you've already got the auto indexing. Index. Yeah. So we're if if it worked, it's going to be there. We're still going to check it, make sure it's right, and fill in any gaps. If it didn't work at all because it's an oddball document, we're going to have to do the whole thing. That's still going to be part of the process, but it's part of the workflow with the scan step. Is the scanning at the front end is the scanning the Well, we're still going to review the document. We're going to look at the paper for legibility and all that before we get to, before we scan it. So that's the review step still happens first. Okay, so you're going to scan it mm -hmm. and then you're going to index it. Mm -hmm. the index yes. And then, and then see. Yes. Now we still have the original there, which is great because you know we still have it there, and if we need to change the original for some reason, we can do that without having to void a receipt without having to call back the customer. We can do it right then and then rescan it. So you're applying the label to the image like it's an image for the document? Yes. Yeah, it'll be an electronic label on the, pa on the first page, not a sticky note. But, we, but um, we're going to test that out too with our customers if, to, to see if they want the sticky note on their original. Um, some don't. If you e-record it, you don't get a sticky. You know, you just get the image. Yeah, so that's, that's something that we might test out with our customers. Any, um, anyone else have a question? Comments? A joke? Yes, Andrew? Well, not a joke. Oh. Mary, you'd like to comment on that? I already did. Sure, 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 sure. I guess that says it all. Kimberly? Kimberly, you were there. Yeah, they were great. I, I agree. Kyle and Caitlin were both terrific. They, they were as committed as we were. They worked, con constantly worked. And they asked amazing questions. They came up with great ideas. It was, 
uh, it was an ideal situation. I was really proud of my team as well because they came in with, set, with an open mind to change something that belonged to them and to break it apart and, and change it is not easy. And so I was really proud. Um, also, one, one thing um, that I just wanted to say, this process just made my job so much easier because, you know, actually, you know, sometimes uh, changes often happen top down, and this process happened bottom up. And so then what, what that does a couple things, not just, you know, ending up with a really great solution to move forward, but it it really, it really makes the, the whole thing work really well and, you know, really easy. So I highly recommend it to any uh, elected official or department head. If you're not using this process, you're missing out. Okay, thank you. Any other questions? There's still, I think, a lot of coffee and maybe some sweets and fruit over there. And uh, help yourself. Thank you again. Thank you all.